Lovebox Live's Nick John interviews Danny George Wilson from Danny and the Champions of the World before their headlining set at Over the Hill Festival 2019. <laughs> Let's, you know, you've, you've been on the, what we'll call the Americana scene for a while now, mm. doing very well, names mm. getting out there and around about mm. there. How do you, as a, an English band, a British band, uh, relate to that form of music mm. and then effectively sell it back to the Americans? How does, how does that work? Um, the first bit is really easy. And I think that British rock and roll has always looked to I guess the States to some degree for inspiration and the best British rock and roll, say Ronnie Lane as an example, yeah. the faces of, has brought to it some real Englishness and then sold it back to the state. Yeah. Like the stones or the faces. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's absolutely. Like really. Like yeah. And actually yeah. gifted the Americans a bit of their own sort of pop culture back to them that they'd done with and forgotten about really so the blues John Miles Blues Breakers or whoever I think they did America a great service and American music a great service and, and actually when you're talking about that sort of I don't know we'd be the faces or John Mayer or Free or whoever I think that the Americans hold that music in the greatest of respect um, in terms of Americana these days I guess there was no such thing as Americana as a genre then um, I don't know is the answer to how would you say, you know, the, 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 uh, the saying Coles to Newcastle is fairly apt, I'd say. But I don't think Americans care. I think we're more, way more obsessed with the idea of authenticity than they are. Having said all of that, I, I was in a band called Grand Drive years ago. And we released quite a few records and toured in America and everything. And they thought that we were just rootsy rock band. They didn't care it wasn't any um they they certainly don't approach music in a sort of ownership kind of way i think they love it's it. a blessing and a curse isn't it yeah so on one hand it pigeonholes you yeah and it yeah. puts you into a brand. but on it's, the other it, hand it supports you yeah it? yes i mean i i grew up being played music by my dad uh, loads of do what music loads of soul music and then loads of dylan and tom waits and neil young and stuff Everly brothers and so we grew up very much, our parents are Australian, so the, the Beatles was, and the English 60s music wasn't really a big thing in our house at all. Um, it was either sort of black American pop music, jukebox music, or folk rock, I suppose, American, you know, acoustic rock. So we, that was just the music, we never rebelled against it, we just really enjoyed it and added things once bands like Uncle Tupelo started coming out, it just reminded us of us of stuff that we liked anyway. So we, we, we never had to make any decision about let's do this sort of music. We just wrote songs about our life and put it and played music. I guess whatever came out was influenced by American music, a bit like the Stones, I suppose. When they were going, let's sound like Chuck Berry or Arthur Alexander or something, but to some degree singing about London, you know, which is, I think, for a band from London, the best of all worlds, you know. Cool, yeah. But in terms of, I've never wanted to be an Americana band or we just do music and it, if people pigeonhole it, then great. You know, if, if it's easy for them to say, this is the type of music I like broadly, then that's fine. But in terms of how do we try and sell our music back to America? I'm not, you know, where, you know, I'm in my late 40s with, I've made 15 albums. I've no more interest in America than Sweden in, or Spain at all. So it's quite prohibitive to go over there and play visa-wise. It's quite expensive. Mm. So Germany's probably much more practical and 
on the agenda for us of doable, you know. So I don't, I, you know, possibly give up any dreams. I ask, the, yeah, I ask the question largely because there's a heck of a lot of mm. artists, maybe in fairness, not the bands mm. so much, but the solo artists, mm. the duos. Mm. Going out there and making records you know, in Nashville. We made yes. a record in Nashville. We met somebody and he said he'd produce it, and you yeah, get that yeah. whole thing going on. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an industry, isn't it? Yeah, in, in, yeah. Uh, without sounding cynical, it is. Yeah, I can I can completely see it's a city, and there's not many of them anymore. Possibly LA, possibly Stockholm. It's a music city where there is a um, infrastructure where there's a studio yeah. system. It's and interesting, writing. you said Stockholm. Well, it's and a, you reference yeah. Sweden as well. Is yeah, that, is that the? I'm, I'm going to say is that the Abba connection? Is that, it probably is that yeah. The, ever since Polar, then, Polar Studios. Yeah, there exactly, and, and that still remains in yeah. pop music, not in yeah. Americana, but yeah. there is. It's still a city that people go to to make records. Specifically, you know, yeah. I don't think London is particularly anymore. You know, the studios have kind of gone. Yeah, no, and, you're right. Yeah. So Nashville is a place where you can go and hire for a decent price a brilliant producer, write songs with some people who've written amazing songs. You can have Emily who has his guitar I did, playing. I did an interview with Foy Dance. Yeah, great. And I know Foy. He's, he's, he's brilliant. This, yeah, yeah. You know, you've done the uh, Muscle Shoals thing. Yeah, yeah, the Tememphis one. And he was just telling me all about it. And yeah. he said it was literally that freedom to go and... Mm. He, he'd written these old songs and mm. found them and said... Oh, actually, these are quite good. Mm. And then, like, you know, well, where's the place to go and record? Yeah, yeah. Like, and he's, exactly, you know, yeah. Fantastic, you know. I kind of... The, the Do you right, have a lifetime? Yeah, though, I mean, a way, yeah. I, it's amazing, you know. And Foy is brilliant as well. I, lo- I like his music a lot. I've seen visions, I've seen art I've seen dreams on the part I see beauty in a bright new start I kind of, it might be age, it might be cynicism in some way. I kind of like, I would like to view things from the opposite end of that telescope in that it was a time and a place. Nashville is a, an industry place, so you can go there and make a record for a decent budget with some of the best people in the world. And that makes perfect sense. Actually, whether you're an American actor or not. But I'm still kind of, I still romanticise um, the idea of making a record in your hometown that has an impact to, to people who've never been there. And I guess like those guys in Memphis... I'm suddenly doing. thinking Cole's Corner, Richard Hawley. Yeah, yeah, why not? You know, <laughs> you know but it's exactly what <laughs> yeah. I mean. You know, yeah. I, don't, I don't... Certainly, I may eat my words, but I have no ambition to go and make a record in another place where someone once made some great records because it's the people and it's what was going on at the time. I don't... I genuinely don't believe there's anything in the water in... Memphis or Nashville that would mean that you'd make a better record there than you would in Leicester. Yeah. And, and that's why I do believe that, but there's not an infrastructure in Leicester that sort of makes that easy, to be honest. But yeah. I don't come from Leicester. I won't be <laughs> making an album in Leicester, but, you know. Yeah, no, it's an interesting thing, but I, like I was saying, I think we're much more hung up on authenticity. Gill- Gillian Welch or someone, you know, she's, she's not from the Appalachians. She's a brilliant musician who wears her influences on her sleeve and we all love it. It's great. But I don't care that her dad's not a farmer. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, well, we buy into that kind of stuff. We really do, though. yeah. We do buy into yeah, that. Yeah, of course. And, and it is and romantic. Rock and roll's heritage. It, it, massively. I'm a huge yeah, fan is. of... Which is, again, an industry. <laughs> yeah, it's, exactly. Of course. But yeah, yeah, Americana's a weird thing. I, I know musicians who kind of rail against it and went... I, don't, I really don't care. You know, if... It, it's quite apparently Americana because people who like to say that they like Americana like our music. So, great. In 20 years, it would have been called something else, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah well, well when, when Grand Drive were play, first playing, people were talking about alt country, <laughs> which I think Americana is the next sort of commercial step or the next pigeonhole on from that. Um, I think we all have to do it. Yeah, you know, of course. From, from the magazines down, you know, the record companies, the PR people, it's... it's uh, but I agree with you. Mm. I don't think they do it in, in this sort of way in the States. No. 
no. maybe maybe it's geographically the place is just too big to, to yeah. push into one area yeah, yeah. or something and and you know maybe you you get what we would call americana bands and they'll come one of them on the west coast mm. Mm. Of, of course coast, you know, yeah the same thing yeah new york probably has as many americana or chicago or it's interesting i just read jeff tweedy's um autobiography from Uncle Tupelo and Wilco. And I guess Uncle Tupelo are a band who kind of started that sort of alt country or... Well, it's hard to sort of say who started it because this music's been around forever. But they were one of the first bands to be punk kids who made country yeah. music, I presume. Yeah. You know. But he's not someone who is particularly fond of, you know, the, that Americana pigeonhole although most Americana fans that I know love Wilco and love his yeah. stuff but he's very slippery when it comes to that Scram Driver were around presumably early 90s yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, so I was listening to bands I was listening to bands like um, I've always loved Chuck Prophet so you know Green on amazing. Red yeah we played with Green Scram Driver played with them yeah. Gin Blossoms amazing uh, Bodines I yeah mean, brilliant all these yeah. bands were coming out we were starting to get the records over here yeah Oh, these, you know, uh, that, yeah, Jay Hawk's oh, first yeah, record. Yeah. Amazing. Hollywood Town. Yeah, Hollywood yeah, Town. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, great, it's great. amazing. Great yeah, we were lucky because we got to tour with Uncle Tupelo. We played with Green yeah. on Red, toured with the Jay Hawks. It was, it was very easy because someone said, Oh, we need a support band for this. And the only band who they knew who sounded a bit like that was us. Really. <laughs> Did you form Danny after that? Um, yeah, straight away. But it wasn't um, at that time. It was much more just a load of mates from other bands. It wasn't. So it was just kind of. I kind of need to still do music. Yeah, and I didn't want to be in a band. I was. I was kind of sick of. Um, I was in Grand Drive with my brother. So it's. It, at that point, I think we both had lived in each other's pockets for longer than we would normally have naturally Sedray and Dave yeah. Davis yeah. yeah yeah but in a nice way but yeah, you know yeah. we both but, needed to yeah. have a bit of a break is, from each yeah. other I but the champs thing was quite close to here the champs I guess formed and I'm not from Oxfordshire but it, at Truck Festival my friends Robin and Joe Bennett who um, have been in bands forever and they were in a band called Gold Rush who were fans and had played with Grand Drive they invited me to do a solo thing at Truck Festival, and they were recording a CD for the festival of people who were performing, and they had a studio on the farm where the festival is. And I went up, and some of the Gold Rust guys were there, someone from um, Tom from Electric Soft Parade, and a few other people from bands were just the band on the thing that I think we called it down in the Champs. And that's where it started, really. But it was very loose, so one gig would you be... You did get that, uh, mm. you were sort of adopted, weren't you? Yeah, very much uh, so. By the Oxford yeah, scene. Yeah, yeah. And I remember you being in Night Shift, really. Yeah, really yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff and getting a lot, you know, and I was going, well, who are this band? Mm. You know, I get mentioned all yeah. the time. Yeah, well, know. someone said to me yesterday, um, I run a record shop down in Sussex, and a guy said, I was talking to someone um, who is a big, you know, who's been going to truck for years, that I knew you from Danny in the Champs, and, and the guy had said to him, oh, God, you know, like they're the truck festival house band, really. But I, I, it's because the guys who run truck were in the champs, really. See, I'm not from Oxford, but we often... It, it, Oxford is the sort of, I guess, um, it's spiritual home of the champs, weirdly. Yes. But it's changed a lot, you know. It went, it, the minute anybody started taking any notice and... I didn't have a band, I just had a load of people every now and then. You know, you'd have 20 people on stage or yeah. me and a bloke with a kazoo. It was, it, it, you know, there was it probably... It's that know, kind of collective it, idea. Yeah, yeah but sometimes, I mean, there's, yeah. there's no safety net with that. If someone can't, if people can't make it, you're, you're sort of, people are expecting this kind of 
Now, I would also say there's no safety net in doing, I think you did something about that. It was about a 16-minute encore Mm. at Fat Lil's last Mm. time I saw you. Yeah, I'm sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that clearly wasn't planned. It was no, just, no. It was... <laughs> Everybody just likes playing, you know. It's, yeah. quite, it's quite jammy, I mean... There's there was a slight element of who's yeah. going to stop this. Yeah, yeah, Not, yeah, yeah Because yeah. you clearly weren't. No, 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 we, we'll play on. So okay. it was like, I don't know, when the power cut or something yeah. was going to be the only way... Yeah, the, the, yeah someone... You love all that line. kind of organic. Yeah, yeah, just see how what happens. It's, it's quite Springsteen-esque, isn't it? Yeah, that yeah, I love it. We're jamming, we're, but we're jamming, we're in the, we're in the moment. Yeah, man, and... Try and put everything into it. Do you write it. with that in mind? No, I just write. I mean, I, I, you don't I, think like this will go. I mean, you must go when you write a song. You must go. This is going to go live. I can, I can feel this. You must do. You must know the yeah, yes. of the band. Yeah, you, but how I think it's be I think it's sort of second nature now to do yeah. that. Go, oh, that will that will work here. But we're about to go into the studio to start another album, which will be I don't know the eighth or something of the Champs. I'm not precious about the songs at all. I just think that they're just write a bunch of songs. You know, I'm always writing songs. I don't. I'm not particularly hard on myself about it. I don't, there's no such thing for me as sort of writer's block or I, I don't take it that seriously. You say some, some things, some songs you say things that are incredibly personal and, and mean a lot and sometimes brilliantly done and other songs are just songs. You know, I don't really, I try and not be precious about it. If, if, if I haven't got anything to write about or no idea for a song, I'll, I'll go and do something else. I don't, I'll watch the telly or something. I'll play the guitar just for fun. But I'm not, the Americana thing is, is a genre where people t- talk a lot about songs. I think it's slightly sort of um, a, a little over precious, personally. Yeah. Yeah. I d- I'm a big Springsteen fan. I love, the, you know, um, the Stones and all those classic rock bands. I've never heard Mick or Keith introduce a song and say, I wrote this song when I was, you know, we were in, you know, Yorkshire on tour and, you know, my friend's mother had, you know, fallen down the set. You know, it, it, they don't do that. They say, here's a song and we're having a great time and that's it. And I kind of subscribe way more to that. Even Springsteen doesn't really over romanticise it himself, I think. Might do so at times, but. They're no, just, it's right. just rock and roll. They're just, I think the, the on Broadway thing he's doing. Yeah, yeah, it's brilliant. Start. Mm. But he, he's, he's debunking yes. a lot of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think, I think Americana. And he's telling us to. Yeah, well. yeah, exactly. Don't hold me up on this pedestal. No, no. I'm I, a guy, you know, I had a dad, we yeah. got on, but sometimes we fought. Yeah, and, and I wrote these songs yeah, that you, you were all magnified yeah. in, in yeah. importance, actually. Yeah. And I completely subscribe to that, you know. I, I'm a, equally a massive fan, so... I do the same as everybody about some other song means so much to me. Chances are, you know, someone wrote it in 10 minutes, you know, at the end of a rehearsal or something. I don't, you know, I don't, I think the Americana is in danger of over, be, becoming a little bit precious and a little bit boring as a, you know, the, the, this art of the song thing and craft. And I think people are overstating that a lot. So the next album, the PR come out and go, Danny's gone solo. He's, he's, yeah. This is he's, the most intense album really of his important. career. Yeah. He's, he went he, to a cabin. Yeah. <laughs> With no, no heating. No. And he's telling us all about his depression. Yeah, no, that's not going to happen. <laughs> They're just songs, you know. I mean, and, and actually, it does, you know. It's only rock and roll, it, but I like it. it. Exactly, really. And afterwards, sometimes you realise that something that you've written does have an impact. And that's really nice, but... It, You'd be crippled, you'd be paralysed by trying to be too important. If, if you let yourself, it's really easy to dismiss all of your ideas because they're not deep enough or they're not meaningful enough. And over the years, I've probably got to the point where I'd rather be, and it was very different when I was younger, but I'd rather be Chuck Berry now than Townsend Zant, if you know what I mean. Not person, not neither of their life, actual lives, but their musically. 
I'd rather I'd rather be writing Johnny Be Good than waiting around to die. Really, it's a dip, there's something different. It might be a bit of a. It's easier to detach that part of your life from it, and if it's a bit more fun. Well, there's certain chords, certain songs, they are just mm. three chords. Yeah, well, all truth. of them are actually. Or three chords, yeah. and I like yeah. the eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whichever it is. Or anything else and you it, want. And do you know what? It doesn't matter. Yeah. No, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. I love it. I mean, I'm a huge music. Yeah. You know, I devour records. I absolutely love it, but I, I try and not take our own ones that seriously. Yeah. yeah. I think it's the only way you can keep. The way I look at it is. There's always room to put an ACDC album on. Absolutely. You know? And and let's just, face it, it's, be, it's going to be better than it, it's going to be better than most of the other things you put on there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank <laughs> you so much. <laughs> Cheers. That was a broadcast production by Glovebox Live. Dot com.